What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Joseph, and welcome to another episode of Comic Breakdowns here on Fictioning Flow. Today, we're talking about Aliens vs. Avengers number one. Ever since the acquiring of Fox Studios from Disney, they had the rights to Aliens. So let's get into it, y'all. It is a wild ride. Brought to you by Jonathan Hickman. Let's go. Our story kicks off with this alien ship going through space and talking about some experiments that they've been working on. We jump to the interior of the ship and we see that it is a Kree that they have been working on. So they're talking about this failed experiment. You can see a face hugger on the floor that he wasn't a viable source. And then these two guys are talking about how they tried it with different other species and they've had some success. Like with the Stratarian, the Dabari, and the Katodi. They've also had some success with the Scrolls, but that's not it. One of the scientists is about to discuss a backup plan when the other one alerts him that they are being pursued. And it's interesting how these two scientists look like they are part of the Shi'ar Empire. And he's wondering like who is this that's pursuing us in this attack formation. And they said it's four explorer class ships and you can't believe who they are. The ships are of Wakanda design. That's right, it's the Wakandas coming in for the attack. And they say that the scientists never say that their defenses are down, so what do we do? And so one of them looks at the other and says, let's give them a very warm and happy and appropriate welcome. The Wakandas breach the ship, and it's none other than his dogs of war, the Hatut Zarazi, the warriors that go out before and hunt for Black Panther handle missions. They are then checking around for any resistance and they say if they have motion or heat signatures anywhere but it's very few and they say okay we can go ahead and bring them in but he says there's no need I'm already here. Of course we see now there are two Black Panthers standing here and the one bows and says your majesty we can't protect you like so you think my father is being reckless that's what the other one's saying. So this is possibly Black Panther and his son. So one talks about how he opened up this time portal protect the international Wakandan race from being pursued and we got to stop this before it damages everything and then he says all right my prince oh we got some contact coming we have some vibration sounds this way as you look closer you see several aliens approaching the group getting ready to attack and Black Panther yells out his son's name Azari for those of you who don't know Azari is Black Panther's son from a distant timeline he also appeared in the movie young Avengers heroes of tomorrow he is the future son of Black Panther and Storm as the aliens go to attack we see Azari send this lightning bolt and then ultimately he just unleashes on all the aliens that are around they all electrocuted to death in an instant just cold knocked out and exploded Black Panther then instructs his dogs of war to go ahead and find the masters of this place and bring them to his feet Black Panther's warriors tell him that the spaceship was mostly empty except for this one and he was purging most of their evidence trying to get rid of it and that they had sent this weapon to other planets to siege control and kind of set off the aliens there. And they said the intergalactic empire almost didn't survive this attack and then the circumstances are getting worse but he comes to a shock when he realizes one of the other places they sent it was to Earth. We now see a old Black Panther as he's talking to one of the uh, scientists and he reveals that he's not human at all, that he's not a Shi'ar. Those were just wigs that they were wearing, that he's actually an android, one of the Wayland androids from the Alien series. And so the android starts to reveal himself and has a little chat with Black Panther. So he looks up at Black Panther and says, am I just a machine? If you prick me, will I not bleed? And so Black Panther says, let's test this out. And he slices, totally decapitates this android. And he's just like, bring me the head. We're leaving because we don't need anything else. All right, now we get into the explanation of the plan. So it goes like this. Seed worlds were not chosen at random. So once they choose a seed world, they send this ship out with a probe. And it carries four queen eggs and along with the 12 infected hosts that are in suspended animation. And then the locations are dropped at the height of population so they can have the most range for infection. From there, a xenomorph is born. And they consider that to be one of the greatest killer machines in history. Within an hour, these drones and chest bursters are fully grown. And then within a day, a hive has been constructed that can help continue the life cycle for the queen to come. Days after that, queen is born and begins producing eggs. From there, the process accelerates even more. After that, a queen hive will produce a brigade of warrior drones. Within one month, an endless army. Within one year, a planet-raising horde. And remember, each seed pro contains four queens. 
so it is the perfect delivery mechanism for an extinction of an entire species. It is said that the inhuman city of Edelon would have lasted for years because they had this great shield that protects them of purity. But there was a crack in this rift and a rift between the have and the have nots. And the aliens used that to help, you know, usher in some chaos. As well as Atlantis fell, but they couldn't hear him because it was underwater. And then finally, Wakanda even fell, even though they held out longer than any other nation, they had succumbed to the alien horde as well. And finally, the mutant nation of Krakoa. Um, they all decided to leave, so the mutants fled to Mars, except for one, Apocalypse. He wanted to test his true mantle of survival of the fittest, even if it meant his own death, so be it, because only the strong survive. And he had to go out in a blaze of glory in his ultimate battle for survival. Before we go any further, I want to talk about Marvel's own version of aliens called the Brood. They usually fought the X-Men and when they would infect you, they would actually make you go through this transformation. Instead of having a face hugger, they would turn you into one of them. So it would start from like an inside out thing where you started to morph and become a Brood and they really went at it. And you can see how Wolverine was starting to change as well as this version of Storm going through the process. And it can only be reversed once you like take down the Queen of the Hive Mind. Eventually they had one of the Brood turn out to be a good guy and work with them. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled program. Now, the last thing to survive, the only human city was built by Wayland. So, they're going to be the original creators of the androids. So, we turn to an old Hulk and Captain Marvel talking about how they're going to survive and what to do. And that the Fantastic Four is gone and Bruce was in charge of Valeria. She went out and tried to find a way to cure this or stop this whole thing from happening to destroy everything. And that's what they're discussing right now. Captain Marvel's telling Bruce that we can't give up right now. We have to work on what happens with Valeria. Otherwise, you know, we'll be destroyed. It'll be the end of us. Then Captain Marvel gets a distress call saying that there's someone at the perimeter that's being breached. And she goes to take off trying to figure out who it is. Lo and behold is Valeria. And before Captain Marvel can even take off, Bruce Banner transforms to the Hawk and jumps over to go rescue her. And she's trying to see if anybody is at the perimeter to help him out. And then we see it. Miles Morales himself. So Miles is about to have Bruce come in and help him out. And she's just letting him know, be careful because Bruce is in a rage right now. Boom! We see Hawk land in. And we see that Valeria is speeding wide in her little car. And she's like, I'm not going to make it. And we see the little signs from the aliens coming out. But then Miles comes in with the save. And she's like, that was cutting it too close. Miles tells Bruce, like, are you going to jump in and help or do I got to do everything? So we see Bruce in his typical Hulk form. He's starting to smash and start trying to destroy the aliens. And he's telling Valeria, like, young lady, you are late. And she was like, Bruce, I am a 45-year-old woman. You cannot tell me what to do. So Bruce continues to scold Valeria and he's looking at her like his own daughter since, you know, Reed had him promise to take care of her after he died. And she said, you know, it was close, but I got what we needed. I need you to help me get back to my lab and then I have to make sure you get the egg that I stole intact to keep that back as well. Because she has some things she has planned that she wants to really experiment with. Now we jump back to Wayland Tower where Valeria has put the egg down and showing everybody what's going on. And she's about to lay out her plan of what she wants to do in order for him to win. And Captain Marvel says, I heard the word win. So QRC and uh, we're all listening right now. So Valeria goes into explaining what her plan is. Like we tried to stop these things at various stages in their life cycle and nothing worked. We tried to stop them at the face hugger stage thinking we could save the humans. But once they attached it was already too late. And that's when she said we have to start with the egg. She wants to put a virus in the egg and that will corrupt everything and kill them off. And so Miles like can you actually do that though? So Captain Marvel agrees that Val can do it. We try science, we try magic, nothing seems to work. I can do this. And Bruce even questions, well, what if you create something even worse? And she's like, I got this. I just need time alone in my lab, and I'll have this all figured out. Now, you all need to just leave me alone so I can do my work. Bruce and Wayland and I having a conversation about, you know, if this was the right decision. Like, we got to fight for our last stand of humanity. And Bruce has said, I really wish I wouldn't let her go. And if something would have happened to her, I would have blamed you. And I would have been very angry with you. And Wayland's like, I, I get it. But it's not our skin. It's not the outer shell that defends us. It's a person. And that person is what's inside, which is a little bit of foreshadowing of what's getting ready to happen. As Valeria is working, we see Bruce Banner come to the lab trying to get in and it's saying access denied. And he was like, what's going on? Open the door. You may need something to eat. You know, I'm kind of worried about you. And he keeps saying access denied. And it's like he's trying to override it with his code. And he's still not able to get in. He knows something is wrong and he's starting to panic. 
We now get one of the most tragic soliloquies from Valeria. She has a recording pop up saying, if you're seeing this, it's already too late. I've run out of time. Like I tried to get this thing going. I wanted it to happen, but on my way, I was fighting and then I got caught and she has gotten taken by the aliens and she has a seed inside of her. She said, I ran out of time and I'm so sorry, but whatever you do, do not open this door. This thing cannot get out. And Bruce, of course, being the person he is, transforms to the hawk and rips the doors off his hinges. This is it, people. We see a full-grown xenomorph going against Hulk. It's a containment breach, and it's a fight for the end. It's a fight for his life. He is just on a hungry rage right now. It's a wild beast against wild beast. We see Bruce squeeze the neck of the xenomorph, getting some acid come out, even getting them in the eyes, and he's just like, it's nothing, because his eyes are kind of grown back. And all he cares about is Val. He like rips the thing in half, rips the head off, and destroys it. He's just worried about Valeria. He's looking for her like crazy. So Miles, Captain Marvel, and Waylon come in to kind of find out what's going on and what happened with Valeria. And we see that Valeria is dead, that she ran out of time. And they're saying this is not good because people forget that she still had an alien egg. And that the face hugger is now on the loose somewhere in the room. And they're all kind of looking for it because they need to stop it. And before you know it, Miles is attacked. The face hugger is on him. I'm surprised his spider sense didn't warn him of this. So it's like, no, Captain Marvel yelling out. It's like, it's too late. We have to kill him. There's nothing that can be done. Bruce was like, we may be able to help him. And Captain Marvel and Wayne like, both, just done. Just burn him. That's the only way to stop this. And like, you know, they look at their mouths. Like, I wish there was some other way. They're getting ready to kill him. And Captain Marvel stops. He's like, what is going on? What just happened? People, you are in for a treat. We now see the face hugger trying to still attach itself to Miles, and then we see this black stuff starting to swarm it and take over. The black and the red are coming off of his costume, and the face hugger is starting to talk. It's like, what? We don't, we don't like this body, but it'll do for now. And I'm like, what is going on? And Bruce's like, oh my god! And they're looking like it's a symbiote. The symbiote has possessed the xenomorph and is keeping it bay. And Captain Marvel, are you all right? Like, not really. That was terrifying, but I I'll be okay though. We then see the symbiote affected face hugger attach itself back to Miles' body and he was like, we're going to be okay. And so Miles was like, speak for yourself. But I know one thing, we got to get the hell off this planet and figure out what to do next. So I love this. I love that the symbiote was attached to Miles. I don't know how that happened. I love that it has control over the face hugger so it can't affect him the same way. I'm excited to see what's happening with his parent. So that's it, people. A great first run of Aliens versus Avengers issue number one by Jonathan Hickman. If I made it make sense, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to know when new content drops just like this. And drop a comment below if you want me to cover the rest of the series. Until next time, peace. What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing. What's up? We are talking about fiction team. What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing. What's up? We are talking about fiction team. What's up? If you don't have it, you are truly missing.